What do we have here? That's a Cervello R5. And this thing looks immaculate. Leads to the question. If you got yourself a new bike or a used bike that's almost like new, does it still need a tune-up? We'll go over this and some other topics after this. Welcome to I Know A Guy Bicycles. Welcome to I Know A Guy Bicycles. Hanging out with the guy. Hi, I'm Justin the guy. Obviously, I have a garage shop. Taking scary out of used bikes one bike at a time. If you like these videos, please like and subscribe. Welcome back to Anua Guy Bicycles, hanging out with the guy. Hey, I'm Justin the Guy on this old bike series. So, you bought yourself a new bike, or let's say a used bike, but the person never rode it, and that person you knew enough or trust them enough to acknowledge that it was never used, or if they did have it actually tuned up, and they have a receipt that's like goes back six months, three months, something like that, but they still probably rode it a little bit. The question is, do you still really need to take it in for the tune-up? Possibly. Um, there's a good chance most bikes that I come across, I'd say 98% of them, definitely need a tune-up. Reason being, there's something that's just not caught, um, or it's just one of those things that, uh, it, it's one or two little things might need to be spruced up for the best experience possible. But that 2%, is something very similar to this guy here, the Cervelo. That's why I want to bring up the topic is, did I really get a tune-up on it? Well, you know, you could probably throw some platform pedals on us and go ride and probably, probably be just fine. But I don't live in the world of probably, so I'm more precise. Like, okay, let's make sure this is 100% dialed and gone through. Granted, if you knew the shop that the receipt came from, and or the person that wrote it didn't write it. Um, there's a couple things you might want to consider. Um, it, it may need to be not very many parts replaced, but you know, bar tape is something that's you know that's a personal preference and grips on a mountain bike or a hybrid. But it's one of those things that's kind of nice to have fresh tape on there. But if you take a good clean rag, um, actually I found some kind of like a, a like blend it with a uh, a new finish. Um, this stuff here with water diluted on a rag, sometimes it'll pull up a lot of that grime off the bar tape, so you can just rub it in and then wipe it off. And you know, these can get wet, so use water or warm water to try to get those off. And it sometimes brings the, um, the bar tape back to life. So that's something as a quick trick there. And the rest of this bike, granted the cables and housing look pretty much immaculate. Uh, and it's, I mean, this bike really hasn't been used. The tires still have the streams on them. The, the rim brake surface has not even been scuffed. Uh, check the chain, it's not stretched. Maybe a little bit of dust in here and so forth. Uh, for me, what I'm gonna do to this bike, well, I'm still gonna do a drivetrain clean, clean the chain, clean the cassette and the crane set and the derailleurs to get any of those contaminants out of there and reflush you know, it with brand new lube. Um, also, the brakes probably need to be cleaned up and scuffed a little bit there. Uh, the frame is still gonna do some nice high level polish and also clean the rims and polish them as well. The granite, the time that I'm going to be putting into this is going to be a lot less. So uh, at the end of the day, if you were taking this to a bike shop, they probably have a lower level tune-up, maybe 50 bucks, maybe 80 bucks, something like that, just to kind of give it a good once over to make sure, you know, all those little things are kind of uh, detailed up, pedals put on, grips, and maybe a, a saddle kind of thing. But in, an ish in this particular case, um, there's, you know, I come from a bike shop. There's always something. You know, I was a service rider for years. I was also a service manager. I own a bike shop as well. We're going to always come up with something. 
it's just like when you take your car into the service it runs fine we'll get an oil change but check it over and they're going to give you a laundry list of things and some of the stuff you can just kind of you know, glaze over it's recommended but that recommended list is good to know um, going forward so when you go for those couple rides or into the next seasons like oh they checked the tires and they're getting kind of low for the next season maybe switch those out um, those kinds of things so that's also an, another safety check as well especially if you're not mechanically inclined you just want to just get on the bike and ride and you're like i want to make sure it's solid that that 50 80 dollars is well insurance to make sure you feel pretty solid and then you start building that rapport with the shop as well as also a history of the bike that you just purchased and therefore you kind of can build on that and make sure you know years down the road the bike is going to work as best performance that case but in this particular situation yeah i'm just going to pop the chain the derailleurs clean it swap out some cables the housing actually i think is still pretty good shape so i don't really do too much of that so the lift on this you know a couple little parts pedals on obviously, and maybe some new bar tape. I'm probably going to be putting in, you know, at the end of the day, if those you, probably around about 100, 150 bucks. Actually, that's not bad. Considering what I got this bike for, you know, under, this is a solid carbon fiber road bike, and it's going to go for under $1,000 $1, with almost like new conditions. This bike, if you bought it new, or I saw other ones that are listed on Facebook Marketplace, eBay, and other places, maybe they have a couple of nicer parts on them, but they're looking at three grand so you're actually getting a bike which is in that three grand pr price point but under a grand so gyms like this they don't come every day but once in a while like i said one or two percent this is what i'm suggesting what that is and this is one awesome bike super light i'm excited to go through it obviously i do a good portion of my the tech of going through it, stripping it down, putting it back together, and make sure, you know, double checking everything. But anywho, this bike is pretty awesome. It's gonna make one stellar bike for somebody just getting into road riding. And I just can't say anything more about it. It's just it's just beautiful. Anywho, unfortunately, well, it's probably my size, but I can't I can't. I just can't. Anyway, check out these wonderful pictures after my final review. Well, we just wrapped this up, literally, and gone through the bike and got it all reassembled. It turned out really well. But there's a couple things we want to talk about before we conclude this video. So we're wrapping this up. And the original question is, does it need a tune-up? Even though it might be mostly pretty much new or looking apparently ready to go. Well, in this particular case, yes. There's a couple things that was definitely a standout for me as a tech going through this bike, even though it probably been just fine-ish, but there's a couple things that actually did stand out that definitely need to be taken care of. And more so, you know, or other than taking the, you know, new bar tape, pedals, and that kind of thing. But the technical aspects that I found as faults that, that needed to be addressed on this guy was, number one, the cables and housing. I did the, replace the cables for the shifting to be cleaner. But how they have the cables is crossing underneath. That was kind of like a fad back in the late 90s, early 2000s. Actually, it didn't really do anything. So also the cable housing here was routed incorrectly up front which could cause a bind and a crash. So that's a safety issue, number one. Second, it was a technical issue needed to be addressed, number two. Number, uh, next thing was the bottom bracket, or the, actually the crank set on the non-drive side. The crank was not pushed in all the way, so the safety tab or the insertion tab was not pushed down. What that means is the crank was a little bit further out, which causes two things. Possibly that crank could slide off, because it didn't have the full clamping connection to the crank itself, in addition to having a little bit of extra wobble in there, could have damaged the actual bearings. 
Fortunately, this bike was not ridden hardly, therefore, they didn't cause any damage, nor the, did it come completely off. But pushing the insertion all the way in, taking it to the 12 to 15 Newton meter torques on that particular bolt, that crankset is now safe and inspected and ready to go. In addition to the cable guide underneath, it had a lot of contaminants into it because they came across a lot of gunk. Cleaning that out is actually going to help the shifting cables to run more smoothly, so better performing shifting. And last but not least, the drivetrain. The drivetrain I did clean, but it turned out to have some kind of really thick or kind of, uh, reminds me of um, ProLink or another kind of uh, lube that kind of, it was like a plastic base and it really just caked onto the drivetrain. The chain of cassette, I did the best I can to get them clean. They cleaned up very well, but the chain rings itself on the crank set were a little more tr troublesome to really scrape all that old uh, uh, lube off of there. Did get it all clean, but now it has a fresher, lighter lube, which actually will perform number one better. Secondly, that particular lube um, will be easier to clean when it needs another drivetrain clean and be replaced or replenished with fresher lube. The brakes turned out well. The frame was immaculate, cleaned up absolutely beautifully. Uh, with the cables and the housing and the crank and drivetrain address, the shifting is actually spot on. And with new bar tape, this bike is ready to hit the road. Check out these awesome pictures and final results in the sun.